my name's Tom Hughes and I play in a band and uh, we made a, a, a special performance of two 45 minute sets of music accompanied by constant film so we had two 45 minute long films which uh, comprised of uh, Ladybug 360 degree footage and some SD footage which was duplicated uh, several times around the dome as well as some animation which was hand drawn and then manipulated on the computer. Yeah, we, we've got a couple of Macs, uh, a couple of uh, MacBook Pros and we used, uh, we used those with mainly Final Cut Express. To get the footage off the Ladybug camera um, we tried going through the uh, the conventional, the proper method, which is I think using Adobe um, an Adobe program, and uh, it was so complicated and um, so convoluted, and um, that uh, we did it once, and um, I just couldn't remember how to do it again. I think I was on the phone getting instructions uh, for over an hour to to uh, to learn how to do this, and after I'd done it once I didn't know how to repeat it so I ended up sleeping on it and coming up with my own methods of uh, extracting the footage and um, preparing it for the dome using uh, MPEG stream clip and QuickTime and Final Cut. Yeah the big challenges were uh, yeah, preparing it for um, to be shown and um, also things like uh, well the rendering was a huge challenge because it, it took 32 hours for our whole 90 minutes of footage um, on a really fast computer as well but it took 30, 32 hours to render everything um, just because it was such large files um, and uh, each the way it's, div it's divided up into five although it's, it looks as though it's one continuous um, screen but it's not it's actually five and uh, it was five times the work that we normally do but all at HD which we don't normally do and we had we, we really weren't prepared we were told that it would be a lot of rendering, but we had no idea that it would be 32 hours of it, and um, that was absolutely insane. So that was the biggest challenge. There's one film where we just had too much going on, and it was at different distances, and the way the Ladybug camera films is a, an area like this, whereas what's projected is a thin band of film, so you have to lose the top half, and the top section and the bottom section. Uh, and a lot, of the, a lot of the subject matter was in areas that we couldn't see, so we had to lose that bit of film. But on the whole, it was uh, it was fine. It was um, when a lot of it was a coincidence, really, but it just worked. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. yeah I'd say um, uh, firstly, give yourself um, an enormous amount of time to render the footage, um, even if your computer's even if you've got the most incredible computer. Just give yourself at least three days for your rendering. Uh, well. Um, it's bizarre because the, uh, the footage comes as a bunch of JPEGs, a bunch of single photos, rather than a QuickTime film or a Windows Media film or whatever. It's just a bunch of stills, the same as a traditional um, film camera where it's, uh, and it's, it works at 15 frames a second, I think. So for every second of film, you've got 15 photos. And uh, I put those photos into a program called MPEG Stream Clip, which... Uh, which assemble, which if you drag a load of photos in there, it assumes that they're stills from a film and you can play them back and it, it plays them back. And just by coincidence, it plays them back at almost the right speed. It came back at 16 frames a second, so it's close enough, you know. Uh, and um, I, used M I used MPEG Stream Clip to slice the film up into five for the five projectors as well. You've got a great, the way it, it's a great big, J great big JPEG let's say one frame, uh, you've got an enormous JPEG like this and uh, it's to be projected onto five screens from five projectors so the task is to cut this film into five and uh, I used MPEG Stream Clip to do that um, you can crop things in MPEG Stream Clip so, so I just cropped it, I told it to crop from there to there and then from there to there and there to there and, and so on until I had five lot sets of JPEGs and then I dragged those into Final Cut. I could have used um, uh, iMovie or something else, but I'm used to Final Cut, so I'd, I dragged them into there, so I had five films, and then edited them kind of one at a time, really. And I kept track of how many, at first I kept track of how many seconds or how many minutes each film was, and then I'd duplicate that again. And then I realized that was a really stupid way of doing it, so what I ended up doing was stacking the films up in Final Cut, as separate layers, um, so you could only ever see the top layer. But there'd be a there'd be a line of film from start to end here, 
and then I'd put the next one on top and the next one on top. I could only ever see the one that was selected, but I'd make all the cuts through the whole lot at once, and, um, and then I'd know that they'd all be the same length and um, all have the cuts in the correct place. And um, suddenly things got a lot simpler after I realised that, that was a much better way of doing it. Um, it was a bit like making a load of sandwiches and cutting them all at the same time. It was a similar, um, it was, <laughs> but not as tasty. <laughs> Again, again, I used um, MPEG Stream Clip. The, the concept of the edge blending is bizarre. It, um, there are five separate films being shown, um, and the edge of this, all, all in a circle, and the edge of this film slightly overlaps this, this film, and the edge of this film slightly overlaps this film, and they all move around like that. And the, uh, the idea of edge blending is that you take 10% off the, the edges of each of your five films, and uh, attach them onto the adjacent film's edges, as, like ears really, you've got, a, you've got a piece of film that's that size, and you add 10% of that film and 10% of that film, um, as if the film has, has a pair of ears. Um, <laughs> and uh, I used MPEG Stream Clip to, to create the edges, and then I used QuickTime Pro to assemble them, and it's kind of a bodge job really, but I'd... Um, I'd create a JPEG that was 20% uh, wider than the original film and then I'd drag my film over the top in QuickTime and then I'd offset my main film by 10% that way and then I'd drag my edge from another film in and I'd stick that at the edge and then I'd drag the other edge in and I'd offset that. So we, I was actually showing three films. You can see the lines. It, I don't know why I quit this. There's a funny little glitch in QuickTime where you can see a very thin hairline. We didn't mind that really. Um, and then you end up with these uh, these films with these thin ears on the edge. <laughs> and it was a yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> I was very very pleased with it actually. Yeah, I was. Um, I had a great view because I, I was sitting in the middle of the dome, um, and uh, the audience sat around me and the other two bandmates and. Uh, uh, and so we had a great view, and um, but I was very, very pleased. Yeah, everything worked really well. You know, just make sure that everyone's clear on um, the technical details because it's, it's so important to get that right. You know, yeah. Otherwise, it's good. I mean, I'd, I'd say it's, it's a really good thing to be involved in. It's great. <laughs>